This video is a must watch if you are new to web development or have previously worked with front end and want to utilize the power of back end. Hey guys, this is Atisha and in this video we are going to build a complete web application from scratch. It is going to have the back end in Express and front end in React. So in the first part of the tutorial, we'll set up the back end server. So there you will learn how to create a back end server, create routes, handle HTTP request and set up the API that our front end can communicate with. Once our backend is up and running, we'll move on to the frontend where you will learn how to make asynchronous requests to our backend API, retrieve the data and update the UI accordingly. So by the end of this tutorial, you will have a fully functional web application wherein the backend would be seamlessly communicating with the frontend. So without any further delay, let's dive in. So I've already created a project folder in here with the name Express React and here we are first going to create two project folders, one for the front end and one for the back end. So let's head on to the terminal provided by Visual Studio Code and here I will create a directory, one for the front end that I'll call as client and one for the back end which we will call as server. Let's change our directory to server as we'll start working on the back end first. So the first thing is to initialize this uh, backend. So we will write the command npm in it. This will create a package.json file and it's asking for some config details like package name, version, description, entry point. So by default, entry point is index.js. So if you're wondering what this entry point is, this is nothing but a file from where the execution will actually start. So we will create a new file and we'll call it server.js, which will act as the entry point for our backend. And rest of the details I will set as default. And now if we see here, we can see a package.json file. Now let's also create this uh, server.js file that we have specified. So I'll create that over here. Okay. Once this is done, uh, since we'll be using express for creating our server, so we need to install that as well. So we will write npm install express. Okay. This is installed and we can see it over here. Also, we'll be using Nodemon. Uh, so let me first show you what Nodemon is. So this Nodemon is nothing but a tool that helps develop Node.js based applications by automatically restarting the Node application when file changes in the directory are detected. So what does that mean? Let me explain you. So usually what happens is whenever uh, we run any server and after that, if we decide to make any changes to our backend code, maybe in some files, then we need to restart our server again and again. It can be a quite cumbersome process. And in order to solve that problem, we generally use this tool called Nodemon, which automatically restart the server by detecting any changes that happens to our backend files. So let's install that as well. So let me copy this and I will install it as a dev dependency. Okay, this is also installed. Now for running the server, we have to also use a command that is going to be nodemon server.js as server.js is our entry uh, point. But we can instead write a script over here so that we don't have to write that and we can simply use say npm run dev to start our server. So here I will write nodemon server. This server is the server.js file. Also in production mode, uh, you can use start and for that we will be using this node server. Because generally in order to start the server, we have to use the command node, but since we are using nodemon over here, so that's why we have specified it here. Okay, this is fine. Now let's head on to our server.js file and start creating our server. So the first thing that we need to do here is to import express. So we will specify over here and we will write require express. And let's also create an instance of application over here. Okay. Now, if you want, you can also specify a specific port over here. So on which you want to run the server. So that is done. Now we will use this app dot listen method, which is going to create an HTTP server and bind it to this specific port. Then that server will uh, listen for any HTTP request and respond to it accordingly. So first inside it, we need to specify the port. And if it runs successfully, we can console log say server started running on port and you can specify the port name over here 
and save it. Let's try to run this and see if it is working properly or not. So we can simply write npm run dev as we have specified a script in our package.json file. And if it runs successfully, we would be able to see this message on our console. So yeah, we can see this message that server started running on port 8000. Okay, this looks good. Now we also need to specify a API route, which we will be uh, hitting from the front end so that we are able to fetch the data from the back end. So in order to create that, we will be using the app.get method and inside it, we are uh, going to specify an API endpoint and an API handler. So you can specify whatever endpoint you want. So let's call it API slash YouTube. And what is going to be the handler, how it is going to handle is we will write two things over here. One is request and one is going to be response. Since it is a, uh, since we're using a get method. So in the response, we will send a JSON in which we are going to have two things, key value pair, which is like, and which says like the video. And another one is going to be subscribe. So let's call it subscribe to the channel okay and save it let's see if this route is working fine or not let's head on to our browser and here we will call this localhost 8000 on 8000 we can't see anything as we haven't specified this particular route but what we have specified is slash api slash youtube so yeah, we can see this message over here that like and subscribe are two values in our object. Okay, so this looks good. So we have our backend up and running. Now in the next step, we are going to create our front end. So now for the front end, we'll be using React. So let's go to our client folder and create a new React project using Vite. So I will open a new terminal over here and change my directory to client. Let me close everything that is present over here and I will write npm create wheat at the rate latest. And since I want to create it in my current project folder, so I'll use a dot slash. Okay, we'll be using react for now and simple JavaScript. Okay, we can see a boilerplate uh, project is created inside our client folder. Now we also need to do a npm install so that all the dependencies and if dependencies that are there in our package.json get installed and we would be able to see a node modules folder inside our client once it is done. Yeah, we can see it over here. Okay. Now let's try to run this and see if everything is working fine. So we'll do a npm run dev. This uh, dev is already there in our package.json as a script. So that's why we need not worry. So we will hit run. We can see that it is running on localhost 5173. Let's see how it is appearing. So yeah, we can see this over here. Now let's remove this uh, code from our app.jsx as we will write everything from scratch. So I'll do a control A and delete everything. And also we can delete everything that is there in our index.css as we do not want this particular CSS file. Now we will do a RFCE. This is a shortcut to create a React file. Uh, so here we can see that this app is there. Let's save it and now see what is there. So yeah, we can see app over here. Okay. Now what our target is, we want to fetch the data from the backend and we want to hit the API endpoint that we have created that is slash API slash YouTube. So for that, we will be using use state and use effect. If you're not aware of use state and use effect, do let me know in the comments. I'll make a separate video on that. But for now, you can uh, understand it in this way that this use state is going to handle the state of the variable that we are going to create and use effect will handle fetching of data when the page loads. Okay, let's understand it in this manner. Now we need to specify use state and use effect so that we are able to import it and for the data that is there in our server.js file that is this particular object we are going to create a variable for it or a state variable for it so i will write const and i will call it youtube cta that is call to action and i will create this set youtube CTA function and I will use a use state and I will set it as an empty object. 
now uh, inside my use effect hook i'm going to fetch the data so here i will first create a function a arrow function i'll call it fetch data it's going to be an asynchronous function and inside it i will write a try catch statement so that we are able to catch any errors that we encounter while fetching the data now inside it we will write constant as response and we will fetch the data so this response is going to receive the data that is going to be fetched from the backend so inside this fetch we simply need to specify the route so the route is going to be localhost 8000 slash api slash youtube so you can specify it over here and then we can also consider that if this response is not okay that if there is any problem what we can do is throw a error so i will write through new error and this error you can uh, write anything like HTTP error and if the response is not okay we also get a variable called as response dot status which will tell you under what status this error has occurred for example 401 402 etc so we can write the status as well so that we get to clearly know what is the problem actually so I will write this response dot status but if everything is fine we are going to save the json response in our data constant so here i will write a fit response dot json let's console log this data and see if it is working fine uh, but before that let's also write this catch statement so if there is any error i will console the error and it is going to be error fetching data and the error is going to be there from this http error so we can simply write error dot message and let's now call this fetch data function that we have created also uh, in the use effect hook you also need to specify a dependency array uh, and uh, since for now we do not want any uh, value to be put in our dependency array because we only want to run it only once when the page loads so that's why i've kept the dependency array as empty and let's save this now if the data is fetched properly from our backend we would be able to see it on our console let's refresh this now if we do a right click and open the console over here we are seeing some error and the error says that access to fetch at localhost 8000 slash api slash youtube from origin 5173 has been blocked by the course policy so what exactly is this course and why we are getting this error so if you want to understand it better in my previous video i have explained everything in a very clear and crisp manner so i would highly recommend you to first go and watch that video before proceeding further so that you get to understand what exactly is this course and how we need to resolve it because it's one of the really core topic that every web developer must know so for resolving this error we need to go to our server folder so let's go to our server folder and we need to install course so i will write npm install course so this course would help us to eliminate this error that we are currently getting so now i will go to my server.js file and import course so i will write require course and now before uh, this api route we need to use this middleware called course and save this after saving it hopefully our error would get resolved so let's go back to the server and hit a refresh so yeah we can see that the error is removed and we are able to see the data this is coming twice as in our main.jsx we have this restrict mode so let me comment this out now we would no longer be able to see it twice so yeah we can see that we are getting our response that is uh, we are having like and we are having subscribe so on our console are able to properly fetch the data from our backend now if you want you can also display it on your browser screen instead of logging it on the console so for doing that we will be utilizing the set youtube cta so after this console is done properly we can set the youtube cta as data now this data would contain this particular object that we have fetched from the backend. Now inside this div, we can create two h1s 
and the first one can say YouTube CTA dot like which will specify the message that is associated with like and we'll create another h1 in which we will write subscribe and save it let's see if you are able to see it on our browser so yeah we can see that if we refresh again on the cons uh, on the console as well as well as on the screen we are able to see the message that we wanted to show now say if you want to make any changes to your server so for example uh, we will write we want to write subscribe to say itisha garg channel for more such videos since we have nodemon once we save it it will automatically get restarted if you see here you can see that it has restarted again and now all of these changes would get reflected on our browser as well so if we do a refresh you can see that the message has now changed and now it is written that subscribe to the sugar channel for more such videos so you can see how easy it is to create an api and fetch it on your front end that's all for this video. I know that the example that I gave in this video was very minimal, but the main motive behind making this video is to give you the foundational understanding so that when we'll build more complex APIs with additional routes and functionalities in future, you'll understand it better. Also, if you want me to make a separate video on how you can test your APIs with Postman or any other sort of video, do let me know in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more such videos. Thank you.